this is set up for triage. Now I will tell you, what is the best research, re excuse me, what is the best rescue center you could ever think of? What's the most important thing if you think of what's the, what's the best one you could think of? I'm gonna tell you, it's empty. <laughs> because that means everything's healthy off the coast. That means there's no animals that are in need of help. That's not true. No matter where you go, there's always impacts on the environment itself and always stuff that we have to be prepared for. So this is prepared for smaller animals. We can use juvenile, bring juvenile birds in here, juvenile sea turtles. We've got all kinds of habitats set up for the smaller animals we work with right away. These can be brought to us by a guest. We can be brought to us by the government. The EAD has a hotline, so anybody that sees an animal in need calls that, and then they call us. We can take anything from seabirds, sea turtles, um, I, dolphins, dugongs. We're gonna walk down to the next room and I'm gonna talk about my favorite animal that we could rescue off the coast. This is one of the ones I learned that wasn't much work being done when I first got here seven years ago. So it was really one of my focuses. This is set up to rescue sea snakes. One of the coolest animals in the world that most people wanna stay away from because they're highly venomous. They have their small teeth. You have to work really hard to get bit by one. If you do get bit by one, it's really not great. So we set up an entire room that we can do this. There are seven species of sea snakes native to the Gulf. There are three that are migratory. So one of the largest different diverse populations of sea snakes in the world. And so getting a chance to take care of that. A lot of the people I talked to said, we don't want to touch them. So we have the ability to do that. It's just one of the many species that we can help take care of here. And the goal is anything that comes in, we want to get it back out. We, we want to make sure we can get it healthy. Now, if we do have an animal that can't go back out, then we will give it a forever home if the government asks us to do it. So it's, it, but it's about trying to get these animals healthy and back out into the natural environment. As you walk by, you'll see just some of the tools we use. The snake hooks, tongs, the, the uh, tube with the yellow on either end is to actually put the front end of the sea snake in, the biting end. And then you can work on the back end and not get bit. So there's a lot of different things you would work with. But as, as you're going through all of this and understanding how we, we learn all the time, our animals tell us everything, whether it's our animals in the park, whether it's our rescue animals, we're learning on a consistent basis. So they always teach us new opportunities. The other thing in the region that there's really not much of a focus on is seabirds. You know, it's, there's not been a place to take them. Now there is. And so we have two different wet holdings that we can bring anything from gulls to, to flamingos to anything else, any of the migratory birds that come in. But the idea is to be able to respond as quickly as possible. We have some very talented veterinarians on staff. And our rescue crew is part of that. We have, when we finish out our fleet of boats and we finish out our fleet of vehicles, we will have two rescue boats. We will have a large research boat that at least we'll probably talk about a little bit and brag about because it's pretty cool. Uh, we will have two ambulances and we will have a number of support vehicles that can respond to anywhere they ask us to go. And as we know in the region, there are lots of people that have other kind of aircraft. If we do get asked to go rescue something far enough away, I'm sure one of the people in the UAE will lend us their helicopter. And we can go do that response too. But we are ready at a moment's notice. You'll see these mimic each other. We can also cover the pool and keep them dry if the animal is, is injured. One of the other interesting things that we talked about in the region, this is a very oil-rich region, but they haven't had much in the way of an oil spill response. There hasn't been that much of a call for that. We want to be ready. So in our Seawall San Diego Park, we have a very large oil wildlife response center. We mimic that here. So in case that happens, we can respond. And it doesn't just have to happen here. It can happen in any of the neighboring countries. Depends on where we're called, but it is a skill that we have. Two of the staff members that came over to help us open the park and stay here are actually part of that team in San Diego. So they have a lot of that experience. Again, just allowing us to be prepared. Once the animals come in, they get a full physical. One of the most important things is being able to do lab work. So if you guys look behind you, we have a full service lab that will take care of anything that we need to do to quickly diagnose how an animal is is doing at that point, and then we can respond with the treatment. You'll notice there's nothing going on, which again is good, because that means there's nothing that needs rescue. We, but we know it's happening, and the whole point is to be prepared. Um, ICU is dark, which ICU is normally dark, because you like to keep it quiet for animals, but there's nothing in there. 
But one of the other pieces is to be able to give our veterinarians all of the tools that they need. We want them to be able to handle everything they can possibly, that would possibly come their way. So setting up, this is surgery, we have set this up. This is uh, completely self-contained, it can handle any of the animals we would bring in. Uh, in our, we have four staff veterinarians between the park and, and the center, and we also have a veterinary pathologist. So we, and then we have 30 different hospital staff that will rotate back and forth. If we have a rescue animal here, that staff will then be based here. So we wouldn't be moving in staff back and forth between the park itself. Is when the animals first come in, they will come in here and get completely assessed by the veterinary team and decide if any further treatment needs to be done or we can just stage them and hold them. And if you think about it, this region has got so much coastline, but there's, it's not developed. So a lot of these animals could be brought in from pretty far away. You've also got a lot of ship traffic. The, the ship traffic is actually very important because there are eyes on the water. We don't get to every place on the water, but if they see something, now there's a place to bring it. Now there's something that we can help respond. And again, working with the environmental agency Abu Dhabi, they will help connect us to those groups to be able to respond as quickly as possible.